What's up, everybody? We are back. John Della Rose here, the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction, coming at you with a epic collection review of Doctor Strange. I started reading this one just because uh, I was uh, in the middle of Iron Man, saw Ditko's name on it, and wanted to read some more Ditko. Uh, this marks... I think all of the superhero Ditko work uh, from the 60s that he did. I know that there's a speedball collection from the 80s that he's also involved in uh, for me to read. So I've gone through all of Ditko's work, um, except for the Masters of Suspense also. I, I should say all of Ditko's Marvel work, uh, which the Volume 2 is going to be coming out uh, pretty shortly, and I will be reading and reviewing then. Let's dive into Doctor Strange for now. Having read the Marvel... Uh, the, uh, the Marvel, uh, whatchamacallit, Masters of Suspense. I have, um, am used to the format here that ended up in Tales of Suspense, which Strange Tales started in with the issues 110 and 11. They skipped a couple issues where there were no Doctor Strange and he returned for a very long run and a nice little coda of Amazing Spider-Man Annual number two. The original Doctor Strange took place with a quick short story where we just learn of Doctor Strange and uh, his sort of mastering of the mystic arts here. Uh, we also learn of the Ancient One, and it's, it's only six pages. So you, you get into it real quick, and that's it. And then we get another quick one in the next issue. And Doctor Strange has a uh, mystic fight here. It's another six-pager. Uh, and then that's that's uh, that's what we get before it goes into its regular series. So it's just a couple of, of tests, it looks like, for stories. Most of the Ditko stuff back then were actually just five-page stories. You do like a splash page uh, introducing a story or, or a splash panel and maybe a couple others. And then uh, and then four extra pages. And he, they'd have these like little uh, suspense stories or, or horror stories or sci-fi stories. And it would go all over the map um, in Strange Tales and other books at the time, and <clears throat> I don't know what the plan was back then, I don't know anything about it, but it looks like this was just one of those. They did a sequel to it real quick, and then they decided to make it into its own superhero thing uh, to add to the superhero craze that was going on at the time. And uh, look at the cover here for 114. Uh, straight out of the golden age of Marvel Comics, Captain America returns to challenge the Human Torch. Wow, pretty interesting. Um, I, I definitely wanna read those Human Torch stories from uh, Strange back in the day. We'll see how it go. We'll see how those go at some point. Um, there, here in the return here, it introduces Baron Mordo, who ends up Doctor Strange's villain uh, that recurs throughout all of this, and Doctor Strange has to uh, fight him off here. And the stories get a little longer to about 10 pages from here on out. And uh, Doctor Strange goes through a variety of adventures. You'll note that Ditko's art has this kind of like psychedelic flair to it in Doctor Strange that you don't get in the Spider-Man issues, where it's just all these colors and different dimensions and things like that. Really reminiscent more of uh, what Kirby was doing uh, in Thor and Fantastic Four. I don't know if that was intentional here, uh, but we get a, a, just a variety of stories, like I said, and Mordo comes back several, several times throughout this deal. Um, and it's all Ditko, and that's the beauty of the art. So I love these little splash pages at the beginning. I think uh, some of these uh, that actually introduce the story, you know, it's kind of a lost art in comics, and it's kind of nice to get that, just get your grounding, see where things are at, get a little bit of what's going on in the story before we go back into the uh, fight with Doctor Strange. This this one becomes pretty interesting. As Doctor Strange, uh, it shows, it, it contrasts the... the um, the disbelief of the public of, of this, his uh, strange habits actually happening versus uh, what is actually happening. It turns out the house is uh, some sort of like interdimensional alien itself. Uh, there wasn't a ghost in there. The, the house actually is a creature. Pretty nice twist for that one for a one-off. We get some wax museum stuff. Uh, Stan Lee loved to use wax museums and circuses in his 1960s comics. You see a lot of that, and I just think that's a sign of the cultural uh, uh, elements of the time, which aren't really, you know, so prevalent these days. We've got Nightmare, where uh, where Doctor Strange uh, gets harassed in nightmares. Um, and we actually have a guest appearance of Thor here, where Doctor Strange has to deal with Loki. Pretty fun. Ties into that. Um, 
we get some more stories. Build the ancient one. Uh, this is a second uh, a second use of Cleopatra. I don't know which one comes first, but Cleopatra uh, was also used in uh, Iron Man. And Tony Stark goes back in time, and and the the uh, uh, what would they call it? The way they tried to sell the book was: Can Iron Man, uh, Tony uh, Playboy, Tony Stark, even woo Cleopatra? <laughs> uh, this one ended up a little bit different, as she's just a woman lost in time, and Doctor Strange needs to send her back. Um, the X Men also had a Cleopatra uh, issue where they went back in time uh, to deal with the pharaohs and all that. All right, um, more Baron Mod Mordo uh, as we get into this. The beautiful colors. You see all the dynamic, cool uh, fights that are uh, ethereal that were imagined here. And uh, you, he keeps referencing Dormammu in this uh, book. And so we finally get to go into his, his uh, this uh, demon creature's realm. There are, is a, apparently a race of human slaves there. This is one of them. And uh, she kind of watches Doctor Strange tries to help him and uh we have the we start to get into some serial storytelling at this point so the first third of the book really is uh single uh issues uh dealing with things there and then then we get into the cool serial stuff so dormammu and baron mordo just keep going throughout this we get this uh, gal showing up periodically who you know that it looks like she might be a love interest it's a lot subtler than uh, a lot of the other marvel comics you, you know, Iron Man with Pepper Potts is very obvious, uh, and then Spider-Man with Gwen Stacy becomes very obvious, and then, uh, what's his name, uh, Daredevil with uh, Karen becomes very obvious, uh, Cyclops and Jean Grey very obvious. This one's a lot more subtle, like Stan really doesn't develop it that much. It's really much more about the trips to other dimensions and the ancient ones uh, and all that. We're dealing with uh, another bad guy here that strange ass deal with and you get a pinup at the end of this issue i think this is the only pinup in the volume uh and i know they did a lot of pinups back then if you get, especially in the kirby books you get uh, quite a few of these but this is a pretty neat one by steve ditko uh, it really highlights all the uh mystic stuff that he's got going really like uh really like all the varying colors there <clears throat> and then uh dr strange fights Taboro. Very quick issues. There's there's not like a lot of subplots. What's interesting is there's really not much background characters for Doctor Strange. Uh, you don't get uh, like the Ancient One is about it. He recurs over and over again. Wong shows up I think once or twice. Uh, you know people who read the modern books know that Wong's kind of like his assistant or whatever. Um, but you know or maybe a couple times not by name. But uh, there's really not much to Stephen Strange's life. I mean it really just is these battles with the Ancient Ones. And this is this is one where like. Um, a TV crew doesn't believe in the mystic arts at all. And then, it, then Dr. Strange has to save them and they finally believe, but he erases their memories. So they don't know. And, and he's got this like memory erasing power, which is pretty OP. I don't, I don't know if they go so far these days, but they, he just goes around and be just like, Nope. And he blanks a bunch of people out in a few different, uh, in a few different, uh, issues here. All right. So Baron Mordo comes back again. We get so much Baron Mordo from this point out. I don't think there are, any stories other than this uh, continuing story of Doctor Strange versus Baron Mordo, as it builds and builds and builds, um, and it really hits its stride here. I mean, it's all it's it's interesting, and the way that they do the continuing storyline portions here makes it really hard to sit down uh, and stop reading. So if if I got this one month at a time, I would have been supremely frustrated. I think uh, back in the sixties, but thankfully. Uh, I could read this whole thing. We get Dormammu back, and we get our, our little gal from his dimension uh, worrying about what's going on again. And Dormammu is actually helping uh, uh, Baron Mordo try to defeat Doctor Strange because Dormammu got defeated before, and Doctor Strange uh, has a deal with him. So Dormammu thinks if he can kill Doctor Strange in some way, then he can renege on his deal to not harass humanity. And uh, Doctor Strange goes into some alternate dimension here, uh, rescues a pretty queen, and uh, you get a little little bit of a fantasy tale in that one. Look at just the art on this uh, this splash page right here. I love it. He's just like somewhat ghastly here as he's popping out of uh, the other dimension and back into Earth. He goes on the run and hides. Uh, the Ancient One is struggling. 
you know, almost dying. Uh, the gal is worrying about uh, whether she's going to get caught by Dormammu and uh, what, what he's going to do. And uh, Doctor Strange builds in this uh, sort of uh, on the run from Baron Mordo. Eventually, he turns the tides. Um, not yet, but right now, he uh, Baron Mordo actually does a little body swap sort of deal in this issue. Um, and let's see. It just goes for these 10-page issues, which, you know, all the art's consistent. All the art is very Ditko-esque. And, uh, and has all these like really bright psychedelic colors to it all the way through, which makes it really fun to read. And uh, eventually, uh, Doctor Strange goes to find Eternity. Uh, and I don't know if this is the first uh, of the Cosmic Universe Eternity that's shown. Very cool concept. It's, uh, it's just got all the cosmos inside of a, a giant body. A very interesting thing. Eternity says, hey, uh, I got nothing, and sends him back to face uh, Baron Mordo with nothing. And Baron Mordo's got Dormammu's power working for him. Um, and we just have an epic fight scene in the next one. And uh, here we go. Uh, it starts to escalate into a climax of this story around this point. And Dormammu uh, looks like he kills Doctor Strange at some point. Um, and he, he kind of just like, ditches Mordo and, and calls him a loser and a flunky. But Doctor Strange comes back and faces Dormammu all by himself. Um, and uh, eventually Dormammu uh, then uh, sent that girl off to some dimension somewhere uh, while Doctor Strange comes back to Earth after this battle where he you know, tricked Dormammu and had some victory. And uh, he eventually uh, gets kidnapped by... Baron Mordo disciples, and this weird mask, whatever, uh, keeps him from actually using his magical powers for a couple issues here. He fights them. He comes back and goes after Dormammu again. You see, it's it's kind of repetitive a little bit, but the way it builds story-wise is, is, uh, is really one long story, which makes it a lot of fun to read. And, like, and the art's just so nice. I just, uh, I'm just happy to read it. We get the end at last. This is it. The final cataclysmic class of, of creations of mar mightiest mystics, only majestic marvel. <laughs> Look at that's a mouthful right there. Would dare hurl the epic between the covers, and only you are worthy of reading it. I just love this bombacity uh, from Stanley. I also love the way that they uh, introduce everybody. Edited by the Enchanter, Stan Lee. Penciled by Steve Ditko. Now, the last few issues, like, Stan Lee actually bowed out of scripting. Um, I think the last issue was of Stan's was there. And Denny O'Neill uh, starts uh, scripting at this point. You get a Roy Thomas issue also uh, to kind of end the Steve Ditko run. I don't know what happened. I think Stan and Steve had a fight. Um, and this is about where Steve quits Marvel, um, as I recall. I I don't remember exactly. I know they were not ha that Steve Ditko was not happy over the direction Spider-Man was going, um, and I'm not sure about Doctor Strange in the history there. But uh, that might have led towards other people scripting things uh, because you know Ditko's uh, got a very very specific thing he wants to do with his art, and uh, he doesn't uh, like being messed with. So <laughs> it became a thing. Uh, so it ends. Uh, this is the last Steve Ditko issue to round out the volume. Doctor Strange uh, rescues the gal um, and sends her off uh, to wherever she's going. Her name's Clea, and uh, this is where it really develops that Doctor Strange is uh, kind of interested in her as more than just, like, somebody he's rescuing in, but as, like, maybe a love interest or something like that. Um, defeats Dormammu, defeats Baron Mordo. Uh, everything looks like the end. He's got his amulet back. He's done. Yay. Um, and that ends it, um, and that really ends the story here. You could you could quit and never read another Doctor Strange story, and this would be the volume for you, and you'd, you'd be fine. You'd be good to go. Um, so, yeah, obviously Ditko was on his way out, and I, they knew it, and so they ended here, and uh, it you know, did a good job with the story. I think the last couple issues with uh, Denny O'Neill's scripting were not quite as strong as some of the middle ones with Stan in this, uh, in this uh, serial epic. But uh, it served its purpose, and it cleared things out. It, it finished up the storyline, so it worked pretty well. And then we get to the Amazing Spider-Man annual, where Doctor Strange uh, basically fights some mind-control guy 
who's mind controlling these uh, goons. Uh, and his name is, I don't remember his name. Where's his name? I don't know. Oh, there it is, Zandu, there we go. Silence, when Zandu commands, others obey. And then he, uh, he hypnotizes them into fighting. Spider-Man tries to fight him uh, and the, the goons, but because they're hypnotized, they can't even feel any pain, so they don't even care. And Spider-Man eventually goes after this guy who's after a wand fragment uh, that Doctor Strange has. Uh, you know, he gets it at some point, but Spider-Man knocks it out of his hands. They, they do a nice team-up battle fight, and uh, they become friends, and Sandu uh, gets his memory erased in Doctor Strange fashion. So uh, this was a great tale by itself. Uh, Ditko drew it, of course, too, because he was drawing both Spider-Man and Doctor Strange at the time. And uh, I love that this didn't have the typical, like, superhero uh, misunderstanding where they fight each other and that uh, they just teamed up right away. It was kind of refreshing because I've read a lot of those like misunderstandings. Um, obviously with the Loki issue, Doctor Strange kind of was pitted against Thor a little bit. Um, they had that with Iron Man and Captain America. They, they had to fight each other before helping each other. It's kind of, uh, and it was really the chameleon or something. Uh, so they, they do a lot of those and having something where it's just a pure team up, uh, dealing with the mystic things. Spider-Man's really a street level crime fighter at this point. So he's like, I can't even believe what just happened uh, because he doesn't really engage in this kind of realm uh, very often yet uh, until later. And uh, it, it just makes me uh, really appreciate stories like this. And it also makes me uh, appreciate the stories later a lot less, to be honest. Because you get into the 90s and 2000s, and it's like Spider-Man's seen all this stuff before. He's gone to alternate dimensions. He's had cosmic powers himself. It's like you can't really wow Spider-Man like, like he could be as a teenager here, uh, being wowed just by a simple mind control guy. Um, and that's, that's pretty cool. And, you know, honestly, when these characters get too many stories to them, uh, just their backlog, um, I guess, really holds down um, their potential uh, for drama. And, uh, and so these early stories really mean a lot because the characters really get to develop a lot. They get to come into their own and do their own thing. Now, it's interesting. I think Doctor Strange develops a lot less than I think any other character I've read so far of the Stanley era. And I've gone through Fantastic Four, gone through Spider-Man, I've gone through um, X-Men, uh, Daredevil, what else? Uh, Iron Man at this point. And, um, you know, Doctor Strange doesn't have a big cast of background characters. He doesn't have his, like, secret identity personal life. He just fights these mystic things constantly. And so with the lesser character development, uh, yeah, it's a little lesser fun. But I really liked, uh, on the other front, Steve Ditko's imagination and going into these uh, alternate dimensions and realms and all that. And it really offset uh, that sort of thing. So it was a lot of fun on that level. Um, and I definitely, it's a short read for an epic at 380 pages. Most of the epics are kind of closer to 500 pages. Um, and it was a lot of fun. I love that. I love it. You know, frankly, when Stan gets into these 10 page serials where they just continue and continue and continue, you see this in Hulk volume two, uh, where he fights, uh, the leader and he's really, you know, dealing with the leader, hunting him down and, uh, and, and building a big arc through that where the Hulk gets propelled into the cosmos and back also. Um, that's really where Stan excels. I, I think I think the shorter books uh, offset a lot of his uh, overdone dialogue, which kind of bogs the books down a lot. So when you get those 20 pagers, you know, they can feel really long. But when you get into these 10 pagers, uh, they feel short and, they, and, it, and the, the books feel a lot better. Um, so the way that these were constructed really helped the story flow. This is one of the better volumes I've read of the Epic Collection so far. Um, because of the lack of background characters and all that, um, that really play much of a part and there's no real personal stakes other than S Stephen Strange wanting to do good against evil. Um, I think, you know, they got to dock a couple points off for that, but it's really fun stuff. Um, Ditko's imaginative, uh, sort of ectoplasmic self, uh, as he's, as he's, uh, coming out of his body, uh, and, and the way that's all done is really cool and unique. Um, and so, um... I gotta say, it's uh, probably about an eight out of 10, one of the better epics I've read. All right, guys, that's it. Epic collection, collection review. Let me know what you think of uh, Doctor Strange. I've never really read other Doctor Strange before, so this is the best of his work I've read. Um, but uh, well, yeah, it's, uh, it's good stuff, at least in my opinion. 
Have a great day. I will uh, be back soon. And thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button before I forget.